Hello everybody, this is Sandy again from your Railroads Online team. Time for a new update as March is almost over. The update will be released on Monday, March 25th on the beta branch. To bring in a bit of variety, my team member Goku will guide you through the new content today, which includes our new locomotive, the Class 47, the rotary snowplow and the roundhouse with a bigger turntable. Further, we implemented some new features and bug fixes, so let's hop right into the dev look. Hi everyone, Goku here, and I'm Community Manager alongside Sandy for Roads Online. For those of you who, who may not know me too well, I have been on the team for over about a year now, I think. Maybe a little over. Can't remember, time flies by, am I right? I started out with the unofficial server in an attempt to bring people together that like to talk about Roads Online. Over the months, the server started to grow, and I was approached to run the official Discord. My career has grown ever since. Currently, I do playtesting, reporting, and managing our bug tracker to ensure that bugs get fixed in a timely manner. I manage the Discord. I created the in-game wiki from the tables to the images that you currently see in-game. I also help Sandy and Kume manage the project and the team as well. Let me tell you, it's a lot of hard work, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Now, enough about me. You didn't come here to hear me talk about, talk about myself, so let's get into some new things. We've got quite a list of stuff to go through we're going to go over the new content and then i will also go over some bug fixes and new features that have been added to the game so let's go ahead and get started shall we so let's start off with our newest engine which is a roster the dnrg class 47. go ahead and open up the buy menu here so i've got a little bit of history trivia here for you class 47 was built to rectify the problems that the 45 and a half suffered from such as their undertubed boilers didn't provide the 45 and a half with sufficient steaming capabilities without getting into the technical side of the class 47s were built with larger boilers calves and tenders and sporting tractive effort at 9628 over the 9625 that the 45 and a half had in 1924 all class 47s were reclassified as t12s along with being reboilered gaining an extra 854 uh, pounds of tractive effort, totaling 11,590. T12 class 460 saw active passenger use all the way until their withdrawal. The first four were scrapped in 1926, with four more being scrapped in 1936 and 1937. However, the last two T12s, 168 and 169, saw use until 1938 and 1941. So yeah, that was a little brief little history about the Class 47. Uh, we're happy to present the Class 47 as built for now. A long-weighted addition to the Railroad's online roster of locomotives, we hope these high-speed 10-wheelers find a place on your railroad and will be perfect for any pay train, fast freight, or with future mail and passenger operations. So, that being said, let's go ahead and go over some configuration options. So you have your, you know, you got your numbering got your names and then you got your got your tenders so, so the class 47 comes equipped with nine smokestacks eight headlights and three paint options for your enjoyment um, I think it'll make a nice addition to anyone's road I'm definitely gonna get one on mine all right so now for all of you guys out there I'm gonna unmute the video here and I want gonna blow the whistle for our whistle fanatics out there in the community all right you guys ready i'll be quiet now goodness gracious doesn't that just sound lovely i think it's a nice uh nice new whistle and we haven't had that type in game before all right let's go over something that you guys may have saw in this video beforehand so before the video started there were some slides of 
something new that we recently added to the game, along with a little bit of a flyby of this thing being in operation. We have <clears throat> since recently introduced the Rio Grande Southern number two rotary snowplow. And this is a behemoth of an engine. The snowplow took many months for us to create. We've been working on this bad boy since October of last year. It's how long it's taken us to get this done. So let's go over some history information while we sit here and just stare in awe at it. In January 1892, the Rio Grande Southern received rotary snowplow number two during the early years of the Rio Grande Southern. The railroad prospered off silver for several years following the passage of the Sherman Silver Purchase Act of 1890, but this would be short-lived as in 1893 the act would be rep was repealed. After selling rotary one to the Casso and Slocan Railroad in Canada, for the next 50 years, the RGS would make do with several wedge plows, a flanger, and rotary too. The RGS would later be dealt a severe blow when on Thursday, February 10th, 1949, RGS crews arrived in Telluride, Colorado with number two from Ridgeway, leaving it at Vance Junction while they spent the night in Telluride. Sometime around 5.30 a.m., train men received a call alerting them that the rotary had exploded. Upon inspection, rotary number two was determined to beyond repair. So the little rotary snowplow comes with two stacks, eight headlight or eight headlights and four different paint schemes. So let's go ahead and preview this bad boy in the store, shall we? Alright, so we got our rotary snowplow. We got two different smokestacks. We got some headlight options here. It's kind of hard to get up here, but we'll get it. Sports electric lamp lights as well. And then we've also got some different paints. All right. RGS number two snowplow requires a engine behind it because the snowplow is not self-propelled. We have a class 125 behind ours. And then in the video earlier, we showed off uh, her being ran. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a peek. So we got some hatches here that are interactable, which you will see the valve gear and everything. Sliding doors. Got your hatch for coal dumps. Just got a big nice firebox. If I can find the firebox, goodness gracious. And an unmute because this thing is loud. All right, so we come in the cab here. We've got windows open, doors that open. Got our reverser, cylinder cocks. Got boiler pressure here, regulator. And if we come up here, you can peek down inside these gaps to see the valve motion of the engine. Pretty cool. All right, and then we come up front. We have our baffle control, which controls the uh, chute in the front. So you can turn it to go either left or right. Got our air brakes. Features new air brake noises, so I'll be quiet. Sounds pretty nice, huh? And then we've got a flanger under her let's take a look shall we so we got our flanger right here currently in the up position if we go back up into the cab here hit the flanger to negative 100 she will be down on ground level to help scoop up snow that the rotary cannot get all right with that being said we showed you guys a little bit of the snow plow let's show let's show her emotion shall we we're going to keep her stationary here i'm going to run into the cab and I'm going to pull the rag. I'm going to fire up old girl here. She's very loud. You can see everything turning inside there. Really cool looking. Then you come up front. And you can see the rotary itself spinning. Very nice. Very cool feature. 
I'm gonna do that. Okay. So we've got our roundhouse here. We would like to introduce to you our Pine Valley engine house. We wanted to build upon the lore of Pine Valley Lumber Company. So we took the aspects of several real life prototypes to create this freelanced four stall roundhouse. While not based on anything, any real prototype, often requested, finally implemented. Our first roundhouse, four slots for locomotives. The ground is high inside of the roundhouse. Under each locomotive, there's an inspection pit. At night, the lights will turn on automatically. It's big enough to store your 125. And for this, we have to create a new turntable, which also is the correct size for the 125. So here's our interior of the roundhouse. You can come down, got your inspection pits. Let's go underneath the logo, shall we? Let's go into class 47. Crouch down. Yeah, we can uh, we can RP some surface under here. It's pretty neat, right? It's pretty cool. Okay, let's get out of the inspection pit before I get swallowed by the engine. And then we've got our big turntable. It's much bigger than our other one. Has plenty of space for the 125. You see, she's sitting on there pretty nicely. Um, let's go ahead and show you where to find it. All right, so if you want the roundhouse, you go into facilities. It's going to be under engine shed. And she is already pre-placed on groundwork. You will be thrown into the flying mode when placing her. Just because it's such a big building. Um, do note that the turntable does not come equipped with this. So you will have to put the turntable on. And this will hold like any of the turntable types as well. So if you wanted to do the regular version turntable. Turntable number two right here the smaller one boom you can put her on there or if you're like me and you're gonna expect to have bigger engines turn table two link her in and she snaps on just like that or you can snap rails off of each arm if you like for you know those of you that want to do that totally can um, we also added the ability to snap telegraph lines to the side of the, oops, not the stump, what am I doing? Snap telegraph lines to the side with the telegraph pole. So you just place your pole down and she'll find it. Pretty neat little thing. It's just a cosmetic feature, but it's there on the side of the building, so why not? Okay, so let's go and turn it nighttime. Um, it's seven o'clock. All right, as you can see, the lights came out on the inside. That's what our turn or a roundhouse looks like on the inside at night. Pretty nice lights in here. Not too bright, but also not too dark. And if you come outside the door, got a lamp right above the door. It's a super cool roundhouse. I really like this a lot. And I think it's going to make any a, a great addition to any railroad. And if you're also looking to place multiple in a circle, like an, an actual like 20 stall roundhouse or 16 stall roundhouse, there are no hitboxes on the sidewalls, so you can merge them together if you like. That's up to you. You can have a single one like this, or you can have a giant one. Totally up to you. All right. our new third person driving UI. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get in our uh, Tweetsie over here. All right, and to get in, you're just gonna usually hit the F key as normal, so F, and we are greeted with our third person driving UI. So this driving UI replaces the current placeholder that is in game, you know, the one that looks like a race car, with the current one that you see now on screen. So. Let's go over a few things, shall we? So let's talk about some of the functions that this has. So you've got your typical reverser, regulator, and brake sliders, as well as uh, your compressor slider over here if your engine is equipped with a compressor, generator if you are also got a generator on your engine for lights, turn on, off. And you've also got your air brake gauge, your boiler pressure gauge, and miles per hour, water temperature, boiler 
uh, fire temperature, sorry, fire temperature. You got your sand, water, coal. This will change color depending on what kind of fuel type you have. Uh, wood will be like a wood texture. Uh, this purple is for coal. If we would have made it black, it would have blended in too well. And same with like any sort of like gray color would have made it blend just a little too well. And you wouldn't be able to see it all that much. We've got buttons for our cylinder cocks. Uh, you can turn those on and off just flick of the switch. We've got our sander button. You can see the sand pouring out down there by the wheels. Very nice, very nice. Turn that off. And there you have it. That's our third person driving UI. It's very functional. We've got everything's in a nice spot. Um, there's no helper thing up here in the corner blocking your whistle that is quillable now. Um, so you can quill it as normal from low to high, however you like to do it. All right, so I'll give you guys an example here. So if you pick up some fuel, dump that bad boy in there, you'll see that our coal bar went up. This also is affected with wood and any other future fuel types that we may add to the game. Uh, over on the air brake pressure uh, for the compressor pressure or pressure you have on the brakes you can certainly see we're at 99% brake supplied now pay attention to the air brake gauge so if I start to unapply brakes you will see that the air brake pressure slowly goes down until we hit about zero when we dump the air out of her and same thing for apply you increase you'll slowly increase and once we reach max pressure we are fully applied on brakes on the locomotive itself pretty neat feature um, more to come on additional features that will be added at a later time once we get some things uh, banged out, shall we? So, I tried to explain how the knuckle coupling works in Railroads Online currently. Uh, we added a gameplay option, so if you hit escape, go to your options button, gameplay. You'll see that there's an automatic couplers section here. Turn that on and it will convert our standard link and pin to knuckles. So you can see here on the 10 mile, we got some, got some knuckles there. We've got body groups changed for the uh, flat cars. I'll show you. So we go back to options, gameplay, turn off. We are at link and pin. Okay. So we go back, turn it on. Boom, knuckle couplers. Heck yeah. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so let's go ahead and give you guys an example of how this bad boy works. So I'm going to turn on my game audio here because I know Sandy likes to overlay audio. But I'm going to turn on and I'll let you guys hear some of the uh, knuckles sounds. So. All right, so we're currently knuckled in here. Got our brakes applied. Let's go ahead and reverse the set the reverse turn the other direction so I can show you how these things come apart. All right, so we're fully knuckled in. We're pinned in and everything. Looks nice. We got uh, some sway when you go around corners and stuff, so they're not super rigid and you don't, you know, fling your train off the track. Um, I'm gonna turn. Only audio on. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and let's say we're here to cut half the train. I'm just going to walk up to any one of these two knuckles, going to right click, and you're going to get the uncoupling animation. Super simple, super easy. Do it again. You can do it on the fly as well. Just unhook like that. Very nice, very nice. Okay. 
So that's an, a high overview of how knuckle couplers work in Rare Online. Not too complex, still a beginning feature. Uh, it is an early access title, so these things will be worked on and adapted over time. Um, eventually we may end up adding some other stuff to make it to where you can mix and match things, but at this time it's either all knuckles or all Lincoln pins. No, nothing in between. Okay. Turn my audio off for some of again. Okay, so next we're going to go over our Theodolite. Theodolite, the surveying tool that was shown off a little bit ago. So we're going to come over here where we got a slight grade. Make it super easy. Okay. So to pull out the Theodolite, you're going to hold down the middle mouse button where you got your uh, hotkeys. So hold down middle mouse, select up, and it's going to be our Theodolite. It's going to pop up a little surveying tool like this, and you can place as many as you want. Uh, but first, we're going to start with something just a little simple here. So let's say we start like flat track here. So I'm going to come out a little bit. I'm going to place our theodolite. I usually just do like right at the right at the end point. And so now let's start going up that grade. So we're just going to keep placing up. Placing up, and then you'll start to see changes in the gradient as we start to climb this hill. 6.2, 9.9, 8.7, 2 So it'll show you the in-between. So it does, they do go inactive if you don't have a menu open, or if you don't have like the Theodor lights out, or if you don't have the rail selected. Okay, so you can see we start at green green hit yellow once we hit like two and a half percent then we hit red for six then we're at like red again and then we're back down to 2.4 so let's go ahead and follow this up see if we can make a hill up there shall we so we got it we're gonna go here that's zero percent gonna go 0 0.2 so we're gonna leave it at that because it's not you can't do those micro decimals like that so now we're gonna change it up to one percent then we're going to round up here to a 3%. Okay, then we're going to go up to a 7%. Now we're going to chug all the way up to a 10%. Going to barely clear the hill here. Going to go down back to a 9%. And then down again to a 2.4, so we'll do probably two percent that would be fine and then the rounded off you just go back to zero for flat and there you have it you've got a somewhat decent hill now uh, the rail ties are just kind of buried in the ground but that's all right that's all right it's for testing purposes only now to delete them you can either do delete all or delete props so we're going to do delete props just going to click on every single one and they will disappear So we added some new features for players when laying track. So what you can do is when you pick a track piece, you can now start flying. Fly anywhere, you can fly all over the place, you could lay your track, help you plot out your rails, be like, ah, I think the sawmill's over to the right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay a piece of track. Uh, let's just curve it. Let's curve it about 120 degrees. Boom, just like that, you're done. To quit flying, you hit right click. You will always start at ground level, so if you want to start flying, you just look up and you'll end up in the air. Look down, you'll be on ground level. Uh, you get space as well to get quick height. And then right click and you will be back on the ground level. Pretty simple, pretty easy, very nice. Um, let's go ahead and check out something else too that we added down here. Down here, I kind of got uh, a little carried away with railroading, and I uh, seem to have left one of my cars in the ditch here. But uh, I'm too lazy to re-rail the car up there, so I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to look up, and I'm just going to drop it right there on the bridge. Easy peasy. You can now fly with re-railing. Very useful tool for when you've fallen off a bridge and you want to re-rail back on track. You can just grab it 
and fly around with it and drop it anywhere. Pretty nice, pretty easy. It's pretty cool, right? Well, I've got one better for you. Let's go to the ye old coal mine. So you come up here and you're like, oh shoot, I don't have any cars up here yet. No problem, it's fine. Just go in the buy menu. Buy a car. Where did my car go? Is it at spawn? No, it spawned right there. You can now spawn cars anywhere on the map, wherever the player is. Spawn locomotives. Anywhere where the player is. Spawn. Rotary snowplow. Boom, there it is. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool feature. I like the ability to spawn things wherever. I don't have to run all the way down into the map. Now this is a permanently on feature, so if you want to have that feeling of spawning things at or, at or around spawn, then all you do is TP to spawn and buy your stuff and haul it up. Or you could just buy it wherever you're at and go. Nice, easy, cool feature. I enjoy it. I think I'm going to be using this one a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to leave session and we're going to talk about some multiplayer fixes. Nothing too major. We made a change to our password system. So you know, go to your play game, host your server as normal. You can type out your password. And now, to make your passwords even more secure, you can get some symbols in there. Any symbols that you like, pop them in there, make your password secure. Got rid of the second password because it was a little too confusing for most players. And, it wouldn't, you know, we didn't have it pointed out properly, so it made it hard to be like, well, where do I put the second password? Well, this one says server password, so where does the server password go? Does it go on the list or does it go to the top of the server? You know, those kinds of things. So, a little bit of easy use feature for players, uh, new and old alike, who want to play multiplayer and who want to secure their servers so they don't have any uh, random people join in potentially grief you. That's the last thing you want, right? All right. So, now that we've gone over this bad boy, it's time for some bug fixes. All right. So there are two bug fixes here I want to go over for you. Two of which have been a pretty high pain point for, for a lot of folks. As soon as we get loaded in here, we'll go ahead and chat about them. I think you guys will be pretty happy. These are finally fixed. One of them is a major problem at the moment. All right, now that we're back here, let's go back to spawn. So Freight Depot, and I'm gonna plop down a coal tower, shall we? Cool, yep, coal tower. Yep, looks like a coal tower. Smells like a coal tower. Now you can finally lay track off the coal tower. And you can re-rail. Let's use my handy fly feature here. Re-rail a hopper. Re-rail the hopper right on the cold tower. They all load normally. Again, they load normal. They line up normally. Your cars can run on them. Trains can run on them. Build track off of them. Finally patched. So bug fix here we're going to go down to the good old gold mine here now if you have some of you have noticed that the gold ore when loading into the gondolas will bounce out and end up on the ground making you waste product that's no fun right so open my shooty here good we're good and we're open okay so now you'll see that the gold ore actually falls straight down out of the chute now and into the car. Instead of bouncing like down at an angle and then bouncing out the car onto the ground. So a nice little fix. I'm sorry that you guys may have wasted some product when loading cars due to this issue, but we are good now. So yeah, these two major issues are pain points for you guys. Uh, like since the last update. Um, we also have some more bug fixes that are coming with this update, but those will be posted live on the patch notes when the update goes live on Monday. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for me. 
Uh, before I push it back off to Sandy to go over what's next for Railroads Online, I just wanted to say it's been nice talking to you all for the first time, and I hope I'm able to come back and chat with you more on videos. Now I got a train to go catch. Hope you all have a wonderful day and night, and I'll see you soon. So thanks again to my colleague Goku for this nice overview of our new content. Last but not least, I will give you a short outlook of what is coming next and what we are working on. As already mentioned in the social media posts, we decided to postpone the map update to April. The Maxi map will have the ability to scroll in and out. You will see the whole track, all industries and all cars and locomotives there. Further, you will be able to operate switches on the map itself and when you hover over the industries, trains and cars, it will show you what they are currently carry or what you have stored in. You will also have the ability to turn on and off the displayed industries and cars on the sidebar menu. The minimap will show you the tracks, locos and cars as well, also the direction in which you are heading. With the current update we already implemented the flight mode for track laying. More improvements for track laying will be implemented soon with the spline update planned for April. So April will be full of new features as also further parts of the new UI will be implemented then. Good news also from our development side, our partners provided a build with an optimized performance and substantial increase of FPS. We will have to do further tests, but are optimistic that we can also release this improvement with the next update. So we hope you enjoyed the devlog and will enjoy the update on Monday. Have a good time and see you in April. Bye bye. Railroads Online.